Hello again everybody. For a while now, actually for several years, I've been looking into making my own CNC because, you know, I could use uh, some machine to make like a lot of custom parts and stuff. And I had been looking into, you know, like different designs for stepper motor drivers and all that. I'd actually started building my own, starting with some like discrete uh, MOSFETs and like 4000 series logic and stuff and using resistors as like the ballast for the current. And those, I mean, though they work if you like kind of run them at like low speeds. They're not very good for like, you know, for very high uh, speed applications or anything like that. And then I had looked into making some with, you know, still like with uh, discrete logic and stuff that, you know, had more of an active current limiting. And I couldn't quite get it right, so I kind of gave up on that. Eventually, I designed this, which is uh, based off of an L. 298 and a L297 uh, chipset to drive the steppers and I don't know if it's just a bad design or what but it didn't work out so well it it's, it's really whiny and um, I couldn't get it to step properly for whatever reason and I was going to you know like make four of these but eventually I kind of got tired of wasting money trying to get all this stuff to work and decided to just bite the bullet and get myself one of these, which is a Gecko Drive G540. And I I like it. It's it's a very good drive. And it, you, I can run the motors like pretty quick. Well, the motors I was planning on use, using with this are these like just huge beefy steppers that um, I got from an uncle of mine. Um, I guess they're made by Lin Engineering. And I've tried to find this model number on their website. But I'm guessing this must be a custom motor because uh, this exact model number doesn't pop up anywhere the closest I can find is an 86 there you go 8618M-02E and this one's an O2DENC I think because it has an encoder on the bottom which uh, might actually be useful in the future uh, for like some feedback and this says 400 which I'm guessing might be like 400 ounce inches of holding torque and uh, 4 amps the one on the website that matches this the closest says 350 ounce inch torque of holding torque and then says a, um, a phase resistance of uh, 0.7 ohms per phase uh, this one measures slightly different so yeah I'm guessing this one just slightly custom modified version of the one on the website so back to the motor controller as I mentioned uh, yeah it's, it's a very nice unit I, I like it but I have noticed that if I run it for extended periods of time you know just just testing it out you know just letting the motors run after it gets uh, starts getting pretty warm it starts misstepping and on the user manual for this, you know, they suggest that, you know, it be run up to like a certain temperature, you know, in, in like free air or whatever. But if you're going to be running it a little bit, um, you know, like longer durations or whatever, or under uh, places where it's going to get a lot warmer to, you know, like try to come up with some sort of a either active, like, you know, have a fan blowing on it or something or some sort of a heat sinking. Well, I'm going to have to go with some sort of heat sinking on this. And of course, you know, me being the kind of person that like a lot of us that uh, has to know what's inside of these things I decided to open it up to take a look and we'll do that right now so you can uh, see something here that kind of uh, made me a little bit uneasy so these units are fairly easy to open you just kind of like pry up on the sides here and on the other side and then this whole top piece just comes off and it slides off like that so that's the top all the cutouts blah blah, blah. set that aside and then on the top here or the first thing we see is this board this board has a bunch of uh, 0.1 inch connectors here that go to the bottom four boards which are the actual drivers. So each one of these is a driver for each one of the four outputs here for the motors. And that's the uh, 25 pin uh, parallel port input. And then you got all the other interface stuff right here for the power and then like other input outputs and stuff like that. So if we take this off, so you gotta be kinda gentle but then eventually this top one comes off. So then that's the, this is like the whole interface board and then we have the four stepper drivers here. You can actually buy these by themselves and you can see that each one of these has like a bodge wire coming from the bottom there. Um, so up till now, you know, everything looks okay. What I have an issue with is that I'm on the bottom here, if you, if you can like, you know, you look in there through the, between the board and the aluminum casing, that's where all the power devices are. So like all the MOSFETs to like, to drive the motors. I don't know if it's going to be easy to catch on here, but let me see if I can do it. Okay, we've got the macro lens up now. That little screw right there that's on the top of the board, um, the, each board has two of them, and those are used to clamp the 
bored down and the power device is to the um, the aluminum casing as you can see right in there so each one of these MOSFETs is resting directly on top of the aluminum casing which isn't a big deal because it's actually it's like anodized and it doesn't conduct any electricity or anything so that's not the issue but right here on this one you can kind of see that there's a slight gap between the MOSFET and the actual casing so that means that that's not making very good contact to dissipate the heat it's generating that one right there you can, might be able to tell a little bit there's a let me see if I can find some good ones here mm, it's not too noticeable on that one that one you can kinda see that the I mean it's kinda hard to focus it on there but you can kinda see that it's like slightly above the the casing there that one right here you can tell that it's also like sitting slightly above the casing but look on the, look on this side let me see if I can find it here if you can see that one right there you can see the blue I mean it's hard to focus but it, you can see that there's blue um, underneath the that MOSFET I'm guessing that one's a MOSFET too it's kind of off to the side by itself but that means that that's definitely not making contact against the aluminum casing and uh, that one doesn't look horrible but yeah I mean if there's like at least one that's not making proper contact with a casing then you know there's other ones too that are not making very good contact with the case so that could be why I'm getting issues with uh, you know like missteps and stuff like that because the heat's not transferring over to the casing very well and so these devices heat up more than they're supposed to and then I start getting issues so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about here. I've got this uh, little piece of receipt paper that I've just drawn some lines on. And as you can see, if I stick it underneath that, that MOSFET right there, and get a good angle here, you can see that it slides underneath it almost like it's nothing. So there's a pretty significant gap there between the device itself and the casing, which uh, isn't good. And some of these other ones are a little bit tighter, but I mean, yeah, if I mean, it's really hard to catch on camera, but in person you can see a bit of a gap in between some of these. So, yeah, that's not sitting too well with me. There's another one right there, as you can see. I can pretty much slide that paper underneath it with like very minimal issues. So, well, Having those uh, overheat and possibly die is going to pretty much ruin everything I'm trying to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to enhance the heat dissipation capabilities of this a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to remove all four of these. And instead of just having the bare devices, or the MOSFETs just touching the, the casing, I'm going to put in some of this uh, thermal transfer material. It's uh, coated with like plastic on both sides right here, so it just protects it. But I'm gonna cut out just little pieces to put in, you know, underneath all those devices, and then I'm gonna set these all back down, and that should like dramatically improve the the uh, tr heat transfer uh, capabilities of this thing. Okay, so here's one of the one of those motor drivers off the board. I gotta have to make it dark here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And once we take it off, we've noticed, or we can notice that these little scuff marks on the MOSFETs here tend to match up with some of the ones on here like for example this one has a bit of a scuff mark up here that looks like it matches up with that one right there and there's another one a little bit off to the side right here I kinda have a hard time pointing because I got stuff in the way but there's like one right about here it might, you can kinda tell that it's a little bit lighter that appears to match up with the one on the MOSFET right here so that means that those points where the scuffs are, that's where the most of the contact is between the the plate and the drivers themselves. So they're honestly not making very good contact to be able to transfer heat. So I could go with, you know, like putting some thermal paste on each one of these and then sticking it back down. But I didn't want to go the messy route. So yeah, I'm just going to be cutting out like pieces of this stuff and just kind of you know sticking it over the top not this piece obviously because this one's a little too small and this is just like a little remnant that I had but like that you know they're gonna go on here and then that's gonna sit on top and that should as I, as I mentioned not only drastically increase the 
the heat dissipation capabilities, but it'll also make it so that there's no gaps between the the MOSFETs and the and the casing there, because it it's uh it's not like super thick, but it's about a half a millimeter thick, so it should work out like fairly well. And you know, I can tighten on the screws, and this stuff will just kind of like squish down underneath the, each device and provide plenty of contact between all of those and the casing. And in case you're wondering about this stuff, I ordered it from DigiKey. That's the part number right there, 926-1114-ND. It's called the T-Flex uh, 220 V0. And this was a 9x9 9 9 inch uh, chunk, except that I've used quite a bit of it for other projects, so that's why I only have like a little bit left. So not only do I want to increase the heat transfer capabilities between the MOSFETs and the casing. I also want to be able to dissipate the heat from the casing, you know, as best as possible. So I dug in through my uh, Boxo heat sinks here and uh, I had a few options. I had something like this. This one I believe was from an old Pentium 2 and it's the size is okay. Only problem is that, you know, it would fit in the back here, but where the only places where I'll be able to mount it, um, like with screws or anything, like say like in between these uh, these two uh, little spots here, it would interfere with the like the MOSFETs from the drivers and, and the casing here. So this one's a no-go. So I, I you know, just leave that one in there. I also have this one here, which I got a long time ago from BG Micro, and it would fit fairly well. And I would actually be able to clear the like the MOSFETs and stuff to, to, to drill holes, except that down here on the bottom it would interfere with that whole like interface that's down here. So I would have to cut off a chunk of it there to be able to make it useful, and that would mean that I'd only be able to use one screw here, one here, and then one in the other corner to mount it. So I decided, nah, we'll skip that one too. So then I have these. These are some old Pentium heat sinks. And I can use two of these, like say one here, and then one here, like that. Well, I mean if I could, kind of like that. And I can drill three holes on each one. I could do like say one here, like to the bottom to the case there, and then another one here. Uh, cut off to the side a little bit here so it doesn't interfere with that one. So like one right there, one right there, and then on the opposite side. I could do one in the middle there, and that would, you know, prevent like hitting anything else. So that could work. I could do that, which is actually what I think I'm going to do. And then the other side, same thing. I can use three. I could use one, two, and then the three on the bottom there, and that'll prevent, you know, hitting anything else. And it'll, you know, it should be a really, really good heat sink like that. I could even add a fan or whatever. In whatever case, I'm going to put this into even like help it out a little bit more. Although I think even if I don't use a fan, this should be like enough. Uh, area surface area for the heat to dissipate like pretty well I originally had a total of four of these which is what I was going to use for these motor controllers I was building so I was gonna have like four of these you know like side by side like that or or three or whatever you know well starting with three eventually I, I was thinking about adding like a fourth axis but um, I'm probably not gonna do that anytime soon so I would have had three motor controllers like that and then these were gonna be the heat sinks for it but since I'm not using them for this then I'm just gonna go ahead and use them for that so in the end it should look something like that and we can see that even with these heat sinks on it doesn't interfere with my ability to get in and to um, mess with these screws right here to you know like connect and disconnect things as needed and it fits you know it's just uh, they're not too wide they're not too long I can fit in two just like that and if I drill the holes in properly you know then I don't have to worry about hitting any other devices underneath although I'm going to drill the holes with the drivers removed and everything, you know, so I'm really not damaging anything. And then I'm going to, once I have the holes, which, uh, you know, one should be like around here, one around here, and then three, and then one, two, and three here. I'm gonna use these, these uh, 440 quarter inch screws, and I'm going to, I'm gonna tap the holes. I have a tap that's a, a 440 that I'm gonna use to tap these. These should be just long enough to go through the heat sink and through the thermal material and attach and you know like thread through to the through the plate below I can use like a washer or something on top if needed you know to kind of like space it up a little bit but I think this will work pretty well and on the bottom of these I'm not going to use paste either I'm just going to put some of that some of that thermal material so I'm going to cut out a you know like a 
rectangular uh, piece right there and I'm going to put that underneath make sure that you know I got the holes for the, the screws and then that should fit on there just nicely. Okay, so I've got the plate and the heat sinks all drilled out. I got the holes tapped and as you can see the screws don't really extend uh, very far past the surface of the plate there. And once I have the thermal pads in between the heat sinks and the plate, even less so. So that actually looks pretty good and I think it's going to work uh, very well. So now we just got to finish putting the rest of the motor uh, drivers on here and put the rest of these screws on the thermal pads. I've got the thermal pads on the bottom of all the little motor drivers now. And the cool thing about this stuff is that once you remove like the little protective layer that's on the top of each one, this little clear protective layer like that, it's on both sides. Anyways, um, the material itself is uh, pretty sticky, so it just it remains on the components that you put it on like that, and it doesn't fall off. So I can do that to all of them, and then I can place them back onto the onto the rest of the plate there. I was putting the motor controllers back onto that back plate and one thing I noticed is that because the screw holes are right here in between these uh, sets of these eight MOSFETs there's uh, more pressure in between each uh, set each one of these uh, sets of four than there is over where this MOSFET, MOSFET is so what I had to do is I had to heat it up a little bit with the heat gun just to because there's some adhesive underneath all of these uh, heat it up a little bit enough to loosen this up and then lift this up so that when I tighten down these screws this has a little bit of um, puts a little bit of pressure down the plate so that it you know squishes up against the pad because um, once I tighten these down there was still a tiny bit of a gap between this uh, device here and the plates so that way all these get tightened down and they're all making good contact with the, the thermal material and so is this one over here by its lonesome okay so there's one of the heat sinks you can see the screws just barely kind of make it out of the holes where I tapped them and the one on the bottom here does, you know, it doesn't even doesn't go all the way across, so it doesn't interfere with anything. So I don't have to worry about anything shorting. What I did in the back here, I just put like a little rectangular piece of uh, this thermal stuff, and uh, I, I'm not worried about making it the whole, you know, width of the heat sink and uh, length and width of the heat sink because most of the devices like right in that area anyway, so it's fine. I mean, the back is a plate, so it's it's not like it's, I'm more too worried about like hot spots or anything. So that's it all assembled. It got all the screws on there, got the heat sinks on, thermal pads, uh, the interface board is back on there and as you can see it doesn't block access to any of the, uh, sp the spots in this uh, terminal strip here. So it's gonna work pretty well and now all I gotta do is put the top back on. So there it is, all done. And, I mean, if you didn't know any better, you'd think that was a uh, stock, I would say. And it doesn't interfere with being able to put it into any box or anything, because my plans were to put it inside of a box, you know, screw it in from the front. But, of course, it's got to go in through the front of the hole like this to be able to screw on. And the heat sinks aren't going to interfere with that at all. So, I call that one done. And, once again, thanks for watching. I like this kind of stuff. Thumbs up. See you guys next time.